Well, hello and welcome to volume 10 of Drink the Music. I'm Brian here as always with Michaela. And Michaela, today we are talking about uh, the queen, the queen of the whole world, the queen of humankind, of kindness, of uh, just creating, writing, acting, singing, being amazing, having amusement parks. There's nothing that this woman can't do. I have a can of buttercream frosting that has her face on it right now. Uh, and we're talking about the one, the only, Dolly Parton. That's right. Uh, man, a, a can of buttercream frosting? What flavor is I know, is it? it's so it's random. Just, it buttercream, just that's the flavor. Buttercream. That's just the flavor. Fla it's okay, so it's not like any... Okay, um, No, I, 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 I put it up on, on our Discord server. I'll put it up on, on the Instagram too. Uh, because yeah, we're talking today about Dolly Parton and in particular, the album Jolene from 1974. So that was 50 years ago uh, to go from Dolly Parton uh, singing about Jolene to be in this huge crossover star to to doing things like having your face on some buttercream frosting. Yeah. So like teaching kids to read. I mean, have you yeah. the, she did that whole book club thing um, where you can you can get a free book every month for your kid? Oh. I mean, that yeah. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. This, this woman is I, I, I said this before. But I thought she was a national treasure, but she's really just kind of an earth treasure, because I yep. think no matter who you are, you're going to find something that you like about her. Um, uh, Dolly has uh, it's so interesting to me because she is kind of this good old girl. Right. Who's from these mountain, this mountain kind of town. She's from the, the deep south. She's got this really rich, beautiful southern uh, twangy accent that she has managed to keep. Um, and, and, you know, Know, maybe I'm alone in thinking this, but she's not. Uh, th when you when you think of somebody from those areas, you think that they're going to have very sheltered, uh, uncultured, maybe uh, uninclusive views, perhaps. Uh, and that is the opposite of what she is. And so, I mean, she has been the spokesperson for um, uh, trans rights. She's been the spokesperson for women's rights. Um, she has been uh, inclusive of all people, and she manages to get along with people that are vastly different on the on the political scale as her. Uh, she makes it look easy. It's probably anything, but a a aside from that, all of that, her talents, her triple threadedness of talents is just insane. Um, so I I'm also very excited to be talking about all things Dolly Parton. Uh, we have to start somewhere. We could talk about uh, all of the all We're of good. the fun movies she's done. We could talk about all of the amazing songs that she's sung. Uh, the duets that she's done, but we're going to start with 1974's Jolene. That's right. So who is Dolly Parton up until Jolene? So Dolly Rebecca Parton was born in 1946 in a very small town called Pittman Center, Tennessee. Uh, the last census apparently says that there were like 502 people in that town. And I think Dolly Parton was one of like 11 kids. So they made up like, I don't know, like 10% of the town. Uh, so that's uh, that's who she is, who she is from. And, uh, you know, by the time that Jolene was released in uh, 1974, uh, Dolly Parton was already a pretty big star. So she'd already had her first solo album that came out in 1967 called Hello, I'm Dolly. Um, and then in 1968, she won the CMT Music Award for Most Promising Female Artist. Uh, so apparently CMT knew a good thing when they saw it. So uh, like I said, you know, she was already kind of kind of the star, right? She was a uh, mainstay on the Porter Wagoner show, who's this big famous uh, country music star, had this uh, nationally televised uh, television show, and she was kind of the, the main act on that. She started doing that in 1967. And by the time, Jolene comes out. Dolly had already gotten eight Grammy nominations by then, so she was a household name um, in the in the sense of a country music star. Now, country music, you know, then wasn't you know kind of like country music is now. It's it's more of a crossover thing. Like it's it's kind of you know interchangeable with you know rock music or you know uh, pop music and and things like that. Country music stars are as big as any other kind of stars, but country music was still kind of um, not mainstream in this way but really it was this album Jolene that kind of kind of crossed these uh crossed these streams uh for for the world and for Dolly Parton yeah yeah for sure um I, and so uh, I remember uh learning about her and she was on this Porter Wagner show um that that was the first kind of I don't know uh, televised event where you could see her sing and she's got this like lyricalness about her um i saw an interview with her and her whole family apparently her whole family is actually quite musical um her mom's voice is gorgeous if you uh want to youtube one of the old um interviews that she did with her whole family and they all kind of sing or sit around the um 
this stage and there's a lot of them you're right i mean <laughs> there's there's quite a few of them and they all kind of harmonize and they've got this like um this family like family sound that is really beautiful as well as like uh what what we would have called mountain music back in the day around mm. um like appalachia kind of these um just uh it's all it's it's like bluegrass but heavier i i think is what i would describe it as if, if anybody asked me what mountain music was but like um all like all of that really uh came together for the second album uh and created this kind of platform for her to become even a, an even bigger star because it's 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 the two the two singles that came out of this have projected her into you know the rock and roll hall of fame <laughs> like the country hall of fame like music of all time kind of hall of fame ishness and those singles are what what we take away from this album. But there's a lot of other good stuff in, in here, Michaela. So let's do this. Why don't we take a quick break? We'll be right back because we're going to need a cocktail that's worthy of Dolly Parton. If we're going to talk about one of her Dolly Parton's like musical, um, I don't know, kind of like capstone, uh, what really set off her career here in Jolene. So let's do that. Let's take a quick break and we'll be right back to mix up this week's drink. So when we talk about Dolly Parton and we talk about the song Jolene, um, I think about when she sang live this song at the Isle of Wight festival, mm. which is huge. Okay. It's, it's in the UK. It, I don't even know. I think it's still going on. Um, but it was like a yearly or bi-yearly festival, something like that. And she was singing Jolene and this was, this was before COVID. So it was some time ago, but everybody that was there to listen to the likes of like, Foo Fighters, they were there to listen to, um, you know, like Pearl Jam. They were nah. there to listen to like all these. They were there you know? to listen to Dolly Parton. They were there to listen to Dolly Parton. It was amazing because I all these people, I mean, this the stadium, I'll never forget looking at it and being like, oh, my gosh, she's like still got it. And this had to have been this might have been 10 years ago. But I mean, Everybody that was like wearing this, like these black, like leather, you know, everybody's all dressed up like they're going to a rock concert is also pulling out their Dolly Parton wigs and like screaming Jolene. And it was amazing. And she's just there with her guitar singing it the same way that she has been for 50 years. And so when you said, Brian, to me, when you let me say that again. Brian, so when you said to me, hey, I think we should maybe think about uh, what what should we do for a cocktail for Dolly Parton? It was like, whoa, how are we going to how are we going to encompass all of these amazing things that she is? She's like got the southernness. She's sweet. She's got some spice. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I have to say, you picked the Jolene uh, that I think you found from Main Spirits. And this is about as perfect as a accompaniment to a, a song or an idea that is Dolly Parton that we could get, I think. So great job. And great job, oh, Main Spirits, if you. you came up with it. Yes. Yes. Good job, Main Spirits. Uh, whoever uh, there amongst your staff came up with this cocktail, because, yeah, this is a perfect embodiment of Dolly Parton, of that, that sweet, spicy uh, sassiness that you get. Um, and it's a really good cocktail. It's uh, when I'm drinking this, like all I can think of um, is this is probably you know, maybe what Dolly Parton serves. Like if you go over to her house, like to sit on the porch and and talk about uh, her life, which would be an awesome thing to do for sure. And Jolene, you know, as a, as a song um, and inspired a lot of things. And we're going to talk about that here in the music section, but it inspired this cocktail here today. So what you're going to need uh, to put this together, uh, it's pretty simple. It's just going to be a little uh, riff on a mule here, but you're going to take into your glass with some ice. Uh, you could do like a copper mug if you want to, um, I suppose, but um, just doing it into like a like a regular like rocks glass um, or highball glass here. So in some ice, one and a half ounces of sweet tea vodka. Now, Michaela, you and I hail from the South. You spent most of your life um, in Texas. So we're very familiar familiar with sweet tea. If you are from elsewhere that doesn't know about sweet tea, uh, there's two things you should know about it. It doesn't taste that much like tea, and it tastes a lot like sugar, because it's basically just sugar in a glass. So this is going to be a pretty sweet, uh, pretty sweet stipple for sure. So one and a half ounces of sweet tea vodka. Um, another aside, Firefly is the best one. Uh, Deep Eddie makes a sweet tea vodka as well. Uh, that one's that one's good too, the sweet uh, that, but Firefly is like the standard uh, here. That's what I had for mine. So one and a half ounces of that, a half ounce of peach schnapps, 
uh, two ounces of ginger beer. And then you're going to garnish that with some mint and like a little slice of peach. Uh, it's going to get you some nice aromatics from the mint, uh, some nice sweetness from the peach. You can eat that slice of peach after uh, if you want. Uh, this is pretty good, Michaela. Uh, I like this a lot. I don't like I don't like iced tea at all, but. But but sweet tea vodka, I, I can get yeah. I can get on board with that. I can get we, on board with we that. can get our head around that. Yeah, we can get our head around it. Um, I when you sent this to me, I was like, ooh, I don't know, man, sweet tea vodka, because I also am in the camp where tea is. Uh, when someone says, "How do I take it?" and I like they somebody takes it back to the counter because someone's made a horrible mistake because I don't drink tea unless I'm dying and it's never sweet and it's never iced. So. Uh, I uh, took it upon myself to make this drink. We weren't together when we were making it, but uh, mm. this is sweet. It is sweet, but it is not. Um, it's not too sweet. I think the ginger beer, the secret is really going to be in the ginger beer that you use. So if yeah. you like ginger ale, I guess you could use that if you want it to be sweet, but I really wanted uh, the bitterness or the the spiciness of that ginger to really cut the sweetness. Cause I was worried that it was going to be too sweet. So um I would definitely get uh, a, a higher end, more gingery beer if you don't want it to be too sweet. And I think it will pair and, and kind of balance each other out really nicely um, because you're doing two ounces of the ginger beer and an ounce and a half of the sweet tea and the peach schnapps, uh, half an ounce of that. So I think it's going to be, uh, I think you'll be all right if you're worried about it being sweet. Give it a shot. Um, I was not a sweet tea vodka person at all, but now I think I have been converted <laughs> You have been converted. Uh, the that's the power of Dolly Parton. She can get you on board uh, for whatever. Um, yeah, this one is going to be a little sweet. Uh, definitely use a higher quality ginger beer if you can, um, because that's going to be extra spicy. It's going to cut through that sweetness of the sweet tea vodka a little bit. I um, mean, if you don't want to go the sweet tea vodka route, uh, just go with some regular vodka. Still do the peach schnapps in there because it gives it this nice uh, kind of peachy uh, kind of southern uh, you know twang uh, on it, which is really nice. So give that a try, and especially give it a try if you're going to be sitting down. Down to listen to Jolene. And that is exactly what we did, Michaela. So let's do this. Let's uh, go mix up another one of these, uh, at least one more, because these things go down real easy on a hot summer day. Let's do that. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back to chat about this week's album, Jolene. All right, Michaela, today we are talking about Dolly Parton's Jolene from 1974, and it might come as a surprise to no one uh, out there listening that the album Jolene features the song Jolene. So even if you've never heard this album, you've probably heard the song Jolene. Everyone's heard it. Everyone's loved it. Uh, everyone in the recording industry has done a cover of it. Uh, some good, some bad, some great, and we're going to talk about all of those. So let's talk about Jolene, Michaela. So this released in 1973 as a single to drum up some hype for the upcoming album, and and Jolene crushes it as one of the greatest songs of all time, says me, and says Rolling Stone. It was ranked 63rd in the top 500 songs of 2021. Uh, it was all the way down. It was 217th in 2004, which is too low. Uh, 63rd, uh, I'm on board with you now, Rolling Stone. Get your act together out there. Uh, Jolena has kind of this aggressive finger pick steel guitar opening uh, in the song before Dolly comes in, you know, with their with their tale of jealousy and attraction. Um, and apparently the song was based on a bank clerk who was flirting with her husband. Uh, gasp. Don't... Who is this girl to flirt with Dolly Parton's husband on a side note? <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know like what is he? Th what is she thinking she is ever going to do? She He's <laughs> married to Dolly Parton, for God's sakes. Like, what, yeah, what do you, what do you got? Yeah, like, what, what was, what was, what was the game plan? Uh, bank, bank teller lady. I'm sure she was perfectly, perfectly lovely too. But, uh, this song was nominated for two Grammys. So the 1975 studio version we get on this album. It was also nominated for a Grammy in 1976 for a, a live recording. Um, and then the song actually won a Grammy for the Pentatonix version, uh, that they did actually with Dolly Parton in 2017. My favorite line from the song is, my happiness depends on you and whatever you decide to do, Jolene. It is all out of Dolly's hands here in this instance when singing about Jolene. Uh, but the song, one of the all-time greats. One of the all-time greats. Uh, I think, as I said, um, I remember seeing uh, Dolly do this in concert at the Isle of Wight Festival. And it was insane to me. There were so many people that had, like... Were, looked like they were there going to like a goth concert and they all like brought their Dolly Parton wigs, put them on. Everybody's like on, like all the girls are on the shoulders of these boys and they're screaming Jolene and they've all got their Dolly hair. And, um, and, and when you, when you think about the song, the yearning of it, the way in which her voice, um, 
kind of careens over that thumb picked guitar. And um, it was recorded originally by Chip Young. I, I don't know him, but man, it I, it's so iconic and haunting this song um, because mm-hmm. you're right. She is completely uh, in, in the, just begging some woman, Hey, if you could just not uh, take my man, that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, I really love this guy. Um, I feel like there was a song um, by Leanne Walmack called I'm the Fool in Love with the Fool Who's Still in Love with You. And it's basically the same idea where it's, uh, hey, you, you don't know me and I don't know you, but but it's all in your hands. And all you have to do is uh, turn your head or flick your fingers or, you know, kiss my husband and, and it, he's going to be gone from me forever. And that just desperation and heart wrenchingness is just really special. Um, Mm -hmm. But it's the backdrop of this is such a kind of a driven rolling kind of uh, kind of just a a much more upbeat take because of the thumb picking of the guitar. And so you Mm -hmm. don't think it's a sad song um, or, or maybe you think it's an angry song, but she's not even angry. She's just on her hands and knees begging this woman to leave her husband alone because he can't possibly, uh, com- you know, take it upon himself to say no. <laughs> like it's really sad. And, and it does. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah for sure. It, yeah, it definitely is. And it sets the tone for the album. I think really well, you know, obviously it's the big single. It's the, the, you know, title track for the album. Uh, but the album itself is, you know, it's 10 tracks, but a lot of it is dealing kind of with this, um, you know, losing, losing a relationship or, a, you know, a love lost or a love that's gone or um, some sort of separation there. So I think it sets a really good tone there. And that gets into track number two when someone wants to leave uh, here, obviously. So uh, there's nothing quite as sad as a one sided love, uh, it says in the song, which I think is a perfect follow up to Jolene, right? Uh, apparently Jolene uh, got her claws into this guy. Uh, and uh, now someone wants to leave. So, uh, I like the song, Michaela. It takes on kind of this gospel feel, uh, which I think makes it sound and feel even more heartbreaking um, than even uh, Jolene. And, uh, you know, Dolly's voice kind of swells up here, um, you know, quite a bit in the song. And her voice is really powerful. Like, it feels like she's really like building it out in this tiny little recording studio um, in the song. And I, and I like kind of that that more gospel tone, that kind of that bigger voice uh, that she's giving. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. I think... Uh, In my notes here, I wrote mountain music at its best. So you've got that kind of gospel, soulful feel to it. Um, It's this lilt of sadness. It's not as desperate. It's more of uh, kind of resigned itself to the fact that um, she's going to lose or you're, you know, a person's going to lose. Um, Mm -hmm. And I I love the line uh, where it kind of juxtaposes when someone wants you to stay just as much as they want to leave. And one of the things that I think is great about country music, I'm, I've been a big country fan for a very long time. Um, haters going to hate. But the reason why country music has done so well is because they have this way of hooking um, you from the beginning of the song and then recircling it to the end of the song. And the idea of uh, at the beginning is is very different after you listen to kind of the, the chorus and the bridge and, and what she's trying to say is, Um, if you really love someone, you're going to let them go. Um, But it's really hard to see someone really want to leave as much as you want them to stay. And Mm -hmm. that introspection of like, well, what is real love? And is it selfish to keep them if they don't want to be kept and all of that? Um, It doesn't really go into that from a lyrical standpoint, but it, 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 it made me think of it when I was listening to it, especially right off the back end of Jolene. And we talk about how you like to consume albums one at a one song at a time as they were presented rather than kind of in playlist form or whatever. And I thought that that uh, was really an indication that maybe this was the story of the woman. Uh, Jolene decided she wanted her man. And now she's like, man, now he's going to leave. And I really don't (laughs) want him to. And it's really sad. Um, But I thought it was a great continuation, not a great, but, you know, I thought it was an interesting continuation because that's where, that's where it, it put me in as I was listening to this in the order of the album. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for sure. And then you get kind of the follow up to that, um, here, uh, river of happiness, which is, um, uh, kind of, you know, carrying on, carrying on the same kind of thing as, uh, I guess kind of a, like a cathartic look, I guess, um, from the first two songs there. So it's got like this, uh, kind of twangy slide guitar. Um, and it's a little bit more positive. It's a little bit more, uh, 
upbeat. It's, you know, like I said, it's kind of completing the circle of uh, Jolene, right? Uh, Jolene, you know, you get the song, Jolene, you get the song, Wants to Leave, and then you get the song, uh, River of Happiness, which is almost kind of uh, kind of dealing with that. Um, there's a little subtle key change kind of going into the second verse, which I think is really neat. And then she has this, this little uh, kind of vocal run, which is really interesting because especially, you know, in, in the 70s and early country music, that wasn't really like a like a musical like thing that happened in a lot of that music. So I think it sounds interesting um, from that uh, standpoint, that little twist there. So um, not something that I really associate with Dolly Parton's uh, you know, songs or singing, especially in the singles, but you know, kind of this neat little uh, vocal trick that she does is pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like this song. It reminded me, it was kind of a twangy, boogie woogie, uh, dreamy country, kind of country fair music where, um, you know, you're feeling the feeling of love and, and happiness that you get from a lover can be almost biblical. It kind of reminded me of my Southern Baptist church days, but only the good, the only the good parts. Um, I will say it was like this, I, this almost religious, um, ethereal kind of feeling this river of happiness and the idea, um, behind that from a, from a Christian religion standpoint, right. That there's this person that will give that to you and it's not Jesus it's actually your lover and that that kind of idea um I love the notes of the vocals at the end I thought that that was really special um and very different um than anything that I'd really ever heard until I heard this song in depth mm -hmm. yeah absolutely it was uh, definitely a little different and uh, really kind of interesting uh little take on that and then we're getting into a song that also is going to start very interestingly i think in early morning breeze so the song there's kind of this bluesy alternative rock almost uh intro to the song which sounds really really cool um and i think that it makes the song stand out a bit um you mentioned uh, michaela kind of the kind of the storytelling apparatus here of country music as being kind of the circular thing um it's it's kind of simplified but in this song i get a lot of like uh folk music um like this song to me sounds a lot like a carol king song like a carol king written song um i think so it's a little bit different there you know as opposed to you know kind of the circular storytelling you think of folk music as more of like this linear uh storytelling and that's kind of what early morning breeze is to me and it's got that little alternative kind of kind of little plucked guitar uh riff it kind of persists throughout the songs and then uh the song itself is kind of like a poem um you know kind of reminds me like i said of, of carol king or even like like joni mitchell where it's describing these things you know of walking through a meadow and you're you're seeing like the like the pictures and the way she's describing you know the flowers and and things so you know kind of the kind of these last two songs to me really are um like i said kind of a like almost a, a cathartic look at you know dealing with you know the the song of jolene and and losing that love mm -hmm. no i totally agree uh this roiling totally reminded me of Joni Mitchell. Carol King's probably more apt, but I think that at the beginning, kind of the first couple of notes really reminded me of a couple of uh, Joni Mitchell songs. Um, I really enjoyed this lower register, you know, with Jolene and uh, when someone wants to leave, um, there was this kind of higher, more lilting kind of, um, I, I don't know, vocal kind of, uh, like I said, ethereal kind of ness to it. And I think with early morning breeze, I really liked the the depths of kind of the lower register, even though Dolly Parton's um, voice is still kind of high uh, and delicate. It's still, it's got a deeper meaning in this one. And I really like that. Mm -hmm. It's really yeah. unique sound, this one, I, I felt. Uh, and a good pairing to River of Happiness that was just the song before. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, 1974, when this came out, you know, is, is older than than we are. So, so, you know, we don't we don't know we weren't uh, boots on the ground then to to hear this and, ha and how it changed. But it, to me, it sounds very much kind of like this, like this shift in what country music was um was doing at the time not necessarily what it was capable of i think that's you know kind of under undermining it but you know definitely kind of a new direction of of what it was doing and kind of broadening the expanse of that and we're going to talk a little bit about that here in the highlight break but before we do that we've got one more track here we've got highlight of my life which is one of my favorite songs um on the album uh here this has a little bit more it, it kind of has like this family band sort of sort of feeling to me which i like uh, i think it's kind of neat and it's got these backup singers uh coming in and out of the chorus providing some some uh backup harmonies um so you get kind of this like i said kind of this family band uh sort of thing but uh highlight of my life yeah it's, it's definitely one of my uh favorites you know <laughs> Darling, you're the highlight of my life. You're the one that makes it all worthwhile. You're the one that taught me how to smile. You're the highlight of my life. I like that a lot. Yeah, it's just, it's such a simple love song. Um, it's almost, I think, 
under understated um, because the first time I heard it, I was like, oh, yeah, all right. Um, but I think the beauty of this whole album really is in the simplicity of, of it. Um, and that, you know, when a person writes these things or when they, when they perform these things, it doesn't have to be um, anything more than simple for it to be a- any less beautiful. And I really liked, um, I really liked the way this sounded. I love the fiddles. Um, I, I'm going to call it a fiddle because I feel like that's <laughs> what it should be. Um, I think that's what Bob Ferguson called it when he was yeah, uh, producing the album. He's like, yeah. I'm going to put the fiddles on this. Um, but this mm-hmm. song also reminded me of like very Grand Ole Opry style, right? With its mix of drums and guitar. Um, it was a little rock and roll, but not 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 too much. I I, I don't know. The fiddles give it, the, the, the strings give it this really kind of homey feel. Um which is what you want, um, you know, if from a from a love song, right? I I don't know. I I thought the this is really again, it's it's beauty is in its simplicity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a lot of that uh, going on um, in this album, which is pretty short. It's only it's only like a half hour long, right? These songs are all kind of this this little like two minute uh, you know, sort of tales that she's weaving. Um, so a lot of it is simplistic, but it, it's really beautiful and well constructed and um you know obviously the the musicians that were working on this piece were in- incredibly talented um that put this together so uh let's uh let's take a quick album break Michaela we're halfway through the album so um like I mentioned kind of at the top here uh, by the time this uh album comes out you know Dolly Parton was already a, a pretty big star in in terms of country music she'd already released uh I think 11 solo albums plus like 100 other albums that she had done with Porter Wagoner but this album right here is kind of the first glimpse that we're going to see of Dolly Parton as really kind of growing into this wider audience right so it's no, it's no longer kind of at this point after this album comes out it's no longer the Porter Wagoner audience it's it's really this this worldwide audience um obviously because we have you know Jolene and then and the next song we're going to talk about, I Will Always Love You. Um, everyone knows that song, of course. Um, and both of those songs hit number one on the country music charts, um, as they should. But uh, you start to get some more pop crossover uh, here because people start covering uh, these songs, and in particular, uh, Jolene. So uh, what do we know about the covers here, Michaela? There were some there were some not so good ones, but there were some really good ones, uh, some very famous ones. Uh, the Pentatonix one, of course, which I mentioned, uh, that didn't really help propel Dolly Parton. She was already Dolly Parton that we know and love by then. But uh, Olivia Newton-John covered this. Uh, he was a huge star. She covered it in 1978 um, and then actually did a duet with Dolly Parton uh, just a couple of years ago. It actually released uh, earlier this year on the duets collection. Um, so uh, after, unfortunately, Olivia uh, had passed away. Um, so you can go check that out. Uh, Linda Ronstadt did a cover of this. Uh, the White Stripes have done a cover of this. Jack White and Dolly Parton um, are uh, pretty pretty frequent uh, collaborators and big fans of each other, which I think is uh, is pretty neat. Um, and a bunch of other people have done you know various covers of these things. Uh, now the album itself, Michaela, it sold pretty well uh, for a country album at the time. It sold about five hundred thousand copies. Uh, but the two singles here were uh, where it made its money. Of course, uh, Jolene goes double platinum. I will always love you goes platinum. Just as singles um and of course you know this propelled dolly parton into pop and hollywood stardom uh so she's going to do a little film uh we're not going to talk about but nine to five in 1980 uh and did you know kind of the the soundtrack uh for that and won grammys and oscars and nominations and and things like that and that really kind of cemented her as a mainstay in popular culture but i think it all starts here with jolene right yeah no i think i think you're absolutely right i mean i um I think I can honestly say that Jolene was probably the very first Dolly Parton song that I heard uh, before I Will Always Love You. Um, And I am a child of the 80s. So the first time I really heard I Will Always Love You, it was sung. It was a cover. (laughs) It was it was not her Um, because I was too young to see the movie that that it that it's that it was in. But um, but I do think that this album is pretty perfect um and when you like all all you just said right the um, rolling stone magazine a vogue in vogue all of these um uh, kind of biopics around this album uh considers this one of the most perfect country albums if not albums in in all of time uh which is which is pretty amazing considering um the kind of the I don't know the age in which 
uh, Dolly was when she created this album, right? When And mm-hmm. she wrote all of these songs. I think uh, there's only maybe two uh, songs on this album that she didn't write completely on her own. Um, now I'm looking at Wikipedia. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry I'm wrong. But it looks like that's the case. Um, yeah. And I just think that that's so special because... You know, this was 50 years ago. This was released in 1974. Um, and the fact that this this catapulted Dolly into s- such a such a uh, different areas where she could make an impact and through her music and her talents as acting and singing and, and her, you know, giving back to her own community in Tennessee, um, giving back to other communities all over um, through all of the various ways in which she's done that. I think it really just speaks to kind of the, the, what we idealistically think of country music as being is this friendly, like homey loving space in which um, in which to, I don't know, be with your family and come together. And, you know, in all of the, interviews that I've listened to with Dolly Parton. She has, you know, been very gracious, even, even being pressed to, to speak about very hard parts of very tough conversations to have where you could easily stumble, get yourself into trouble. Um, say, you know, she's not said a, a, a wrong word about anybody, even when it, when, when it seemed like she could have and would have been mm-hmm. t- totally been in the right, you know um, I, I think that that, just speaks to kind of the idealisticness that she brings to uh, music, uh, the entire genre of music in general, and then um, and into the world. And I think that this album really does a great job of kind of mimicking that part of her, uh, of, of life in general, because as you know, this, it's got some ups, it's got some downs, but it's not ever, I don't know. It's not harsh. She's not taking shots when she, she could, I, I don't know how to really, I don't know if I'm explaining it well, but I do really think that this album is a very, um, if you were going to, if you were going to pick a cornerstone from which to start when you're looking at Dolly Parton and learning about her, this is probably a, for me, it was a cornerstone. Yeah, absolutely. It, it sets the, it sets the stage for Dolly Parton. Um, and, you know, obviously like we'd said, you know, she is a, she is a star kind of up to this, this point, but really it was kind of this, the springboard that, you know, propelled her from, you know, being, being the famous country singer Dolly Parton to being Dolly Parton, the the you know one of the most famous people uh, on earth. Uh, you know, there's there's a couple of universal truths, right? One of them is that uh, that uh, people don't deserve dogs. Uh, dogs are too good uh, for people, and uh, we also don't deserve Dolly Parton. Uh, she's too good for all of us. And speaking of good, that's what we're getting into right now, Michaela. Track number six, "I Will Always Love You." Uh, you probably know this song uh, either here from the uh, OG version, or uh, there was a little version that came out in 1992. Uh, you might have heard. Uh, so this was written as a loving farewell to Porter Wagon. She was uh, ready to move on from that show. Uh, so she kind of wrote this song as a tribute uh, to him. Uh, Porter Wagner was the show that she was on, as I mentioned, you know, kind of from 1967 up until this point. So about seven years then. So this was the number one country song in 1974. Um, and then it was the number one uh, song again in 1982. It was on the soundtrack for Best Little Whorehouse in Texas. Uh, and then, of course, Whitney Houston sang the song pretty good, I guess, in 1992, uh, number one on the Billboard Hot 100 for 14 weeks, which is a long time to have a number one song. On a side note, uh, her version sold 10 million copies, uh, won Grammys, uh, all that stuff. Uh, Dolly Parton uh, alleges that she wrote Jolene and I Will Always Love You in the same day. That was quite, that was quite the profitable uh, songwriting day <laughs> for uh, for Miss uh, Dolly Parton there for sure. Um, there's also uh, apparently Elvis Presley uh, wanted to cover the song, but uh, his manager... I was demanding too much and Dolly Parton knew better because she's amazing and I didn't want to give up all of the rights to the song. So uh, that's how uh, we get the Whitney Houston version and never an Elvis Presley version. Uh, This song is amazing, Michaela. There's kind of the simple emotional pull to it. um, And it's a little bit more tender and a little bit more vulnerable uh, sounding like even Jolene, right? even, you know, you get the you get the image there of, you know, her like begging and pleading. But uh, this one sounds a little bit more vulnerable to me. Um, I like kind of the simple uh, styling to it. You know, you have the Whitney Houston, which is very bombastic with her with her crazy uh, high, uh, insane vocal range. But, you know, Dolly's a little bit more constricted here. Uh, It's really beautiful. And you can tell just how hard she's working at singing the song to be so beautiful. 
Yeah, I don't know how uh, how a person sings and, and and this kind of heartfeltness and doesn't end up crying. Uh, mm. That's why I probably have never tried to sing this in karaoke. Can you, can you listen because... to the heartfelt kindness and not cry, Michaela? <laughs> yeah, maybe. No, it? I can't. <laughs> but but I'm a care bear, so um, I I loved this kind of soulful, sorrowful, heart wrenching, yet kind of breathy and really delicate in its execution. Um, again, the first time I heard this song. It was not the Dolly Parton version. I I heard um, Whitney Houston sing it, and uh, no no not knocking on that. They're very different songs, mm-hmm. um, and I and I, I like that because it makes it so much easier to talk about this one. Um, if they were exactly the same, I think that would that would be tougher um, for me anyway. But I, I really love this version because it's so much more. Uh, tentative. It's so much more of a thank you. Um, I didn't, I felt that this was definitely a love letter of goodbye. um, And not in a, not necessarily, not just in a romantic sense. um, Although that's kind of the feeling that you get from it. I don't think that's how it was intended, but I think that it's, it's also a, you know, when you meet people in your lives they become special to you and it's time to separate and move on for various reasons um, that there's always going to be that piece of love that you have. And you're always going to hope that they're okay. And, and even though it will never be the same, you'll always still have that love for them and really being able to uh, explain that in, in such a, again, the, the, the beauty is in the simplicity in such a simple, beautiful way that this builds. And then it almost kills you at the end with the sweet breathiness <laughs> as she's like, I will always love you. And I, I'm, I'm not doing it justice. And I know that and I'm sorry, Dolly, I'm sorry, <laughs> but it's so, it's so heart wrenching. It is much more of an emotional listen to me than Whitney Houston's, which is a powerhouse and amazing for a bunch of reasons. Maybe we'll cover that sometime, but this one, um, I, I think there's a reason why it, it was picked and why people have been trying to sing this song uh, since then <laughs> and, and some not so well and some better than oh. others, but yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, yeah, for sure. Something, some things should be left to Dolly Parton and uh, and Whitney Houston, and this is probably uh, one of those. Um, and you mentioned kind of kind of the simplisticness uh, to to this, and this is what we're what I'm getting into, or that's what I'm getting out of track number seven here, uh, Randy. So obviously, uh, Dolly Parton's Jolene is a country album, you know, obviously, but up until now, I think the the album really has more of like this soft rock uh, kind of pop feeling to it. But this one here is definitely more rooted um, in kind of that country music styling, uh, you know, gets us back into the arena here of country music that uh, made and crafted Dolly Parton. Um, but even here, it still has kind of this uh, rock and roll intro, which is which is pretty neat. Um, this has some pretty simple lyrical themes. But one of the things here that I find interesting um, is uh, especially right here in verse two, she says the word reason uh, actually four times in this, you know, so you've given me a reason to live a reason to love a reason to smile and a reason to try um so i like it when when songs and and poetry and stories can kind of anchor on a word like that like the word reason here uh, without sounding lazy um and dolly parton does it really well here because it sounds very purposeful in the way that she's recycling you know that word that word reason um and i think it sounds pretty cool yeah i i agree i i liked this one um because the alliteration between Randy and reason. Uh, it was, I don't know if Randy was a real person that she decided to write a song about, or um, and maybe it was a love story that she had seen mm. unfold around her. Right. Um, Dolly Parton has been married. I don't know for like 75 years or something. So I, I, I liken to think that when she would see these things happening around her and she would use that inspiration, maybe she just pulled this out of thin air. I have no idea. But what I, what I like uh, to think about is the idea that, she um this person is 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 about to leave and she's asking them you know to take take me with you um which i find interesting because it's right on the back end of i will always love you which is when um she's telling this person that they can't be together for whatever reason and it's time mm-hmm. to move on and it's time to and so it for me that just juxtaposition of you know i i will always love you but it's it this is ending and I'm I'm going to move on and I hope you're okay to like absolutely not take me with you. And it's like re- I really love it. I I I don't know if this is, you know, this is a continuation of that story and she's kind of wrestling with herself. I have no idea. Um Randy, I will always love you. There you go. <laughs> 
Randy, I will always love you. Maybe we're living on memories of Randy. So track number eight, living on memories of you. Um, I This song is great. Uh, there's a good amount of Dolly Parton showing off her vocal chops here, uh, which is nice because the, the album is... You know, it's pretty trimmed down. When you think of when you think of Dolly Parton, I mean, you think of that that she's fun and um, very ex exuberant, and you know the the fashion, the big hair, um, and things like that. You think of the you think of the songs and the songwriting, but you don't really think of of Dolly Parton's like like I don't know like like vocal range as being something that you that you associate with Dolly Parton really, or at least I don't. But here she goes into this much higher register than she has um, on the rest of the album, and then she. Uh, maintains like this uh, this really nice uh, pitch accuracy you know no auto tune uh, back then to help the artists out and you know it's it's kind of strange sounding um, in a way uh, which makes it sound very much just like a live recording of her singing it and you can tell that she's just working uh, to get through it and it sounds amazing I I love the way that her voice sounds in this song um, it, the song itself has a little bit more of a bluesy feel to it uh, so we've gotten a lot of kind of genres that she's dipped her toes into uh, here be it in uh, her songwriting or the way that uh, Bob Ferguson was crafting the way that this sounded you know the the producer here of this album um, and I like the sentiment here of living on memories of you um, I think that that's pretty powerful um, especially you know kind of throughout this album which is dealt with uh, you know love and and love loss or uh, misconnection so living on the memories of you that's that's a that's a that's a that's a pretty uh i don't know that's a that's a pretty uh bittersweet sentiment i think yeah i was listening to this uh and i was coming back from santa fe and i was in kind of this wasteland uh the first time i listened to this album um it was kind of early in our trip back and um and i thought man this is real fitting with this song <laughs> because it's like this desolate downtrodden plotting of sadness but she doesn't sound cloying in any way like it's sweet and um and it seems so fitting that you know in this barren kind of desert with nothingness around what are you going to feast your eyes on and you know that's what she's basically saying uh, is that i'm i'm just going to continue to live on these memories of things about you and the love that we had and um i think that that is really cathartic when you're going through a, a breakup or, or uh, just, you know, the, when someone has left you and you miss them and kind of your sustenance is just the memories that you have. And I, I think that that, again, it's super simple, but the beauty of it is uh, we've been singing songs about that probably and uh when rocks were soft right we've been you know talking about <laughs> yeah. how hard it sucks when people leave you and, or for whatever reason and again she's found a way to do it in a in a really beautiful sad way and it sounds amazing i loved the um orchestration of this uh i'm, I'm mm -hmm. the right of the way in which this this song was produced um it, i i got I did not think I was going to love it as much as I did. This was the song that I think brought more tears to my eyes than any of the other ones, which is interesting because it didn't, it wasn't a single, <laughs> but I was like, why, why, why didn't we hear this more than I will always love you? This is great. But that's just my opinion. That's my opinion. Right. I thought it was wonderful. That's right. Well, I will always love you. It really softens you up on this backside. It gets you, it gets you all emotional, right? right? You're, <laughs> you're thinking about the, about this jerk that stole your husband, and now you're like, oh my gosh, what's happening to my heart? So, uh, <laughs> let's see what, what do we got here. So the first track, the first eight tracks, as you mentioned, Michaela, those were all written uh, by Dolly Parton, and the last two tracks here, uh, written by others. So this one actually is a cover of a Porter Wagner song, right? The, the long time, uh, kind of TV host that Dolly Parton was associated with there, um, and apparently is. As far as I could tell, Porter Wagoner uh, performed this song in 1971. It's called Lonely Coming Down, track nine here. It's got a little a piano run. Um, I really like this song. It is super angsty. Like if you put like a like a little like fuzzed out guitar, this would totally be like some emo rock sort of song. Uh, really, really cool. Um, and I like um, as we're going kind of through the song at the end of the uh, of the kind of verses and uh, the the line is. And then again, I felt so lonely coming down, but uh, the voice is dropping out and she almost sounds breathless when she's trying to hit these lower notes. Like she's trying to get her voice down to, you know, whatever kind of bass range, I guess, probably um, Porter Wagner her head and singing the song and it sounds so cool but the song itself is way super angsty um and i like that quite a bit as you know as like a 90s uh, like emo rock <laughs> kid right, right? Uh, how do how do we not like some some emo rock here on jolene yeah um I, I thought this was definitely the darkest of all the songs um i mean 
but let's be clear. Dolly Parton has sung about dogs passing away. She has sung about like a, a woman committing suicide because she's so lonely and something horrible has happened to her. Like there's a lot of darkness that Dolly can sing about and you wouldn't know it because some of the songs are the way that they are created. Right. This one I, within the first I don't know, two lines. I was like, oh gosh, <laughs> what what is going to happen to this poor person? Because I feel like this is just a continuation of um, the previous song, right? Where you're you're mm-hmm. feeling sad, you're really lonely, you're thinking about all them. And then um, it says, "I then I looked for you, but you could not be found. And then I felt the lonely coming down. And like, because it's such a, it's it's got this, deepness and darkness to it i was worried <laughs> of how it was gonna end i definitely like this song it's for me it's the darkest on the album and it's interesting to me that they weren't they weren't written the same time because i felt like they totally one definitely followed the other mm-hmm. yeah for sure and then that leaves us with our last track of the album here it must be you uh, which wasn't written by dolly parton either but i think that it is absolutely perfect um kind of capstone uh, here to the album um, it's the shortest song on the album but absolutely perfect here it's very ambiguous feeling to me um, which I like a lot because uh, you know on this album you know we've we've lost love we found love we've we've hoped for love we've looked for love um, and now kind of in this song there is love but it, it's so like open-ended and vague to it is it is it someone that you've uh, connected with is it someone you've been with is it someone that you've lost is it someone uh that you love from afar that never knew is it is it any of these things so like uh you know peek behind the curtain i just celebrated my wedding anniversary over this weekend so i'm listening to the song and and i'm thinking about you know uh you know my relationship with my wife but you know you could very easily look at it and be like oh this was you know a boyfriend or a girlfriend that i lost you know uh, way back in the day so now you know i'm i'm looking you know back at you and you know you're always going to be with me um even though we're not together maybe it's someone that had had passed away or a parent and it's it's so ambiguous and open-ended so as the listener uh to the song this song could be about anything that we want and i think that that's amazing um in music when you can you can kind of tell your own story but leave it you know ambiguous enough that it could really be anyone's story you could place anyone you want into that song i think that that's that's really great um there's some bu- backing vocals here but you know dolly parton's voice is really is really shining and i i really like like this because when when you listen to it when you listen to her singing like you you it just it just sounds like she's smiling just beaming uh singing the song which i think sounds really cool yeah yeah, I, I don't think I can say it any better than you did, Brian. This happens a lot, um, drink the music, <laughs> just so we're clear. Um, I, I don't know, this song to me, it could have been so many things. I think you're right. Um, I, I mean, thinking about it and, and thinking about it even in a hopeful way where, you know, not just from a from a standpoint of, hey, we're together and we're always going to be together. Like, even if you hadn't met this person yet, Um you know, there, you, we belong together, you and me, maybe we've not met before, just like the dawn followed by the day will always be together. And that is how it will stay. So um, thinking about when you are sad and alone, you're not really alone. If the the soulmate that you think you have is out there somewhere waiting for you, and you're waiting for them like that, that's kind of how I thought about it. Um, as well as like this love from afar, right? Where it's no matter mm-hmm. where, what happens and, you know, we will always be, um, you know, we will always love, have that love. We will always be there. You're, you're not really going to be alone because you can think of me and, and I'll be there. I really, um, I, 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 it's interesting because there's a 2007, uh, another version of this album came out and there's a bunch of other songs on there that we could talk through if we wanted, but, um, I really love that this kind of set the tone for the end. It, it was really a nice bookend. Uh, it gave me a lot more hope than Jolene did, which was the very first song, right? And so mm-hmm. we go from like begging someone to leave their man alone to this idea that no matter what, um, you know, it's it's always going to be this person. You're always going to come back to this person. Um, and again, it goes full circle, right? Just like yep. really great country music and music in general uh, does.
Exactly. Exactly right. And speaking of coming full circle, we have come full circle on the album here by the one, the only uh, Ms. Dolly Parton. So uh, that, that was amazing, uh, Michaela, talking about Jolene. Uh, like I said, you know, kind of at the top, every everyone, you know, probably knows or, you know, I, I'm making the assumption here, but everyone knows the song Jolene and everyone definitely knows the song I Will Always Love You, whether it's, it's her version or not. But the rest of this album has so much more to offer and such a glimpse into kind of the, the crazy talent talent of Dolly Parton, right? I mean, you hear the you hear those two songs and you know that Dolly Parton, you know, wrote those or had some sort of hand in those, but you don't really get the the breadth of just, you know, how like musically capable and competent she is and and was and just the the scope of of her song writing uh to me is really neat and going back and listening to this and how it does kind of weave you know, the story in this very, very short 10 track album, right? It's just, it's just over a half hour, but it is running through like the gamut of emotions uh, here and talking about these relationships that you had. Um, and that's amazing. Um, and, you know, Dolly Parton only does one thing and that's be amazing and all the things. I mean, she's, how do, how do you do this? I, I have no, I don't quite understand. Uh-huh. Um, and she, 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 makes jokes about it all the time, right? That you have a, you have a magnet, Yeah, I think on your fridge that say it I costs do. a lot of money to look this cheap, right? She makes fun of herself. She's not too full of herself. Um, she's gorgeous. She's still gorgeous. I have, I don't even know how old she is and she looks amazing. Um, and there she's, she's used that um, along with, I think the use of the patriarchy and sexism to kind of get what she wants and to um, open people's eyes to different things and different views and different ideas. And she does it in such a way that is talentful and graceful and not um, judgy and mean. I mean, I can't think of any other artist um, in it that, that, that I just can't think of one that has, done that at this that's done things in the way that she has that's gotten that kind of uh garnered that kind of accolades from different different avenues if that makes sense because Mm -hmm. you know she's won tons of awards for a lot of different talent venues right Or, or different talent streams whether it's acting singing um her charitable acts um she has been an icon for the lgbtqia plus community um mm-hmm. and, and and for reading and for children and for those in lower socioeconomic spaces i mean she has done so much as well as cranked out some of the most amazing tunes that we've ever heard i don't know how she does it we don't deserve her as a as a world i'm so <laughs> glad we got her though um yeah yeah so thank you thank you dolly can you have to live forever <laughs> <laughs> yes Yes. Congratulations on being amazing. Yeah, I absolutely, you know, uh, beyond, you know, this, this album, which definitely, um, was, was kind of like this, this gateway to, to Dolly Parton just unleashing, um, all that she was onto the, onto the world, but, you know, had kind of this, this great career before this. And then, you know, just, you know, just exploded, you know, kind of, kind of around the world is just this global superstar. So, you know, you have the music, you have the acting. Um, I think she's written like eight books. She's, uh, was named in 2022, uh, one of times 100 most influential people, uh, in the world. So, I mean, all of that stuff, all of this, uh, crazy, incredible career. Um, and to me, it all kind of, it, it all kind of starts, um, which, which isn't fair to say, I think it, it, you know, it probably started with, you know, hello, I'm Dolly, that very first album, but you know, it really kind of, kind of breaks open or knocks down that door or, you know, storms the gate or storms the castle, uh, here to, with 1974's Jolene. So, uh, that's going to wrap it up for the album, Michaela. So I want everyone at home to, to listen to this album or to, you know, to at least go back and listen to Jolene and listen to, uh, Dolly Parton's version of, I will always love you because, uh, it is very worthwhile, um, endeavor to go back and do it. There's a lot to glean from it. So definitely do that. And if you're going to do that, make sure you make up a Jolene cocktail, take a picture of it, send it to us. We want to see it. Uh, we want to know all of your thoughts about Dolly Parton. We want to know, uh, what your favorite thing that she's ever done. If you've ever been to Dollywood, I've been to Dollywood. Have you been to Dollywood, Michaela? I have not. It's on my list. (laughs) <laughs> all right well we're gonna we're gonna take a drink the music uh field trip that's not, it's not that far to tennessee uh we can get there dollywood uh let's do that maybe uh so if you've ever done any of that stuff let us know uh send us pictures all that stuff you can do it on our social medias it's at drink the movies on 
Instagram and threads and blue sky and on facebook.com slash drink the movies. Uh, go there, go to our website, www.drinkthemovies.com. We'll have pictures of the album, pictures of our cocktail, pictures of uh, the other uh, movie stuff that, that we've done in the past that maybe we'll talk about again in the future <laughs> at some point here on uh, drink the movies. Don't know for sure. Uh, go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash drink the movies. That's where you get bonus content. That's where you get uh, extra, extra stuff, uh, hangouts, uh, bonus episodes where you get to vote on the next album. Uh, and that vote is uh, underway uh, over there right now. So go check that out. Patreon.com slash drink the movies. Uh, it's the best place to do that. Best way to show your support to the podcast. And we appreciate our patrons very, very much. We also appreciate people, Michaela, that uh, subscribe to the podcast. So where can they do that? You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify. We're on iHeartRadio. Uh, we're on Spotify. Good pods, uh, whatever you're listening to now probably has a subscribe button. I'm hoping you're liking what we're what we're belting out twice a week. We have our lobby bar and then our deep dives for music. Uh, when we can get back to doing movies, we will be doing that, rest assured. But until then, uh, hit the subscribe button. If you're liking what you're hearing, tell your friends, leave us a five-star review. That really helps us get all the drink the movies, drink the music stuff out there. And we're so knocked out that um, we're helping to build this community. Y'all are really building it. We're just here. Um, but it's really cool. Um, to, to see uh, everybody kind of come together for their love of music, movies, and cocktails alike. Absolutely. So uh, that's going to wrap it up for this one, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us, and thanks for listening to us talk about Dolly Parton's Jolene. That was an excellent album to go back and revisit uh, for sure. Um, and every, everyone should just listen to Dolly. But just put it like on your daily routine. Uh, you know, do do something related to, you know, giving thanks back to Dolly Parton for all of that she has done uh, for us. So do that. Send us pictures, okay. all that good stuff. And we'll talk to everyone next time on Drink, Drink the, the Music. music. I'm not even going to try and sing it because uh, I feel like yeah, I would not do it justice. Jolene, um, Jolene. No, no, only Dolly. That was only pretty Dolly good. Sing it. I mean, that was not bad. It's up there. <laughs> it's no white stripes, but it, it's not. But, you know, it's pretty good.